Hey folks, and welcome to the Pipnotic Symposium for the 10th of April 2023. I'm sorry I've been a, a bit absent. We've been um, super tied up with, uh, with moving, and so I've been driving boxes and packing boxes and carrying boxes and, and everything in between, as well as trying to organize the, the finishing um, of bits of, of a building project that we're doing. Um, so it's been super stressful, but luckily we're coming to an end. But we moved out of our old place about about a week ago, and, uh, and a dear friend of us of ours let us stay in his place um, until our project is done. So we'll probably be here another maybe week or ten days, and I think we uh, we should be good to go. So um, yes, so feeling rather uh, overwhelmed by all the workload, but um, that's okay. Um, so I haven't been so busy. Uh, recording or, or training or anything in between or even doing any dev stuff but now that we're at this new place uh, things are settling down just a little bit so we'll have time to uh, to get stuck back in okay so okay we have a, a few updates uh, one of which is um, the modifications coming to, to the buy and sell zones uh, algo um, okay so we have there, there are going to be a couple of different modes three modes in all in the, the supply and the buy and sell zones robot. So the first one is going to be um, the normal limit order uh, mode, which is what you what you uh, all know or users know, where this area here is formed like so. It's formed when I don't know when it's when the configuration says so, and then a limit order is put on here. Okay, so it puts a limit order to buy here. The stop is down here somewhere. And the target is I don't know up here somewhere. Okay, so this is this is the standard uh, mode of operation uh, for the buy and sell zones algorithm. And then there's a, another one, and this is called um, um, release mode. Release. Oops, release mode. And release mode operates a little bit differently. And what it is doing is it's waiting until a pattern is formed. So when this area here is formed, or or let's use this one as an example. So let's say it's formed when this candle here closes. When it closes, what it does is puts the stop here, it puts the target about right here, and it opens a market, <clears throat> excuse me, market. So it buys here, a bit of drawdown, price comes back. We kind of accumulate for a bit, and then we finally just dart north and poke into our target before coming back. Okay, so this is a release mode, uh, and this is a new mode that is not currently in the version in the version that's running in production. Then we have a third one, which is one I'm currently testing, which is um, reversal, reversal, reversal mode. And reversal mode is similar to number two. The only difference being that when this area is qualified, so when this candle closes, this area, this whole area of demand is qualified, instead of buying at market, it sells at market. So it says, okay, we have what we can consider to be a price inefficiency. This is a really good example here. We'll use this one just here. So the price inefficiency, boom, price uh, darts down. It qualifies this as an area of supply. And so the robot uh, opens a buy here at market. So it'll buy right there. In anticipation, this price and efficiency rebalances, which it did. Okay, it, it, it did beautifully. And price came uh, right back to the origin, uh, which, it, which is just here. Okay, so this is the third mode that is uh, that I'm currently testing. And so instead of having uh, just one, which is the one that we currently have, we'll have a mode two and mode three. Okay, and mode three will work when mode two is enabled. So when price dashes north, if this is set to true, it'll sell. If it's set to false, then it'll buy. Okay, so really interesting stuff coming up. And I'm thinking that initially this will be manually controlled where you go in and you set either to the one mode or the other. But after time, um, it'll probably be done differently where if we're trading outside of, uh, of sessions, then we're gonna, then we're gonna go for, for mode three. And if we are during sessions, then we're gonna opt for, for mode two.
but we'll see. We need a little bit more data before we can jump to any conclusions about um, what the results or the behavior will be. But that's currently what I'm working on. And I'm pretty close to, to having that all finished up. But as soon as that's done, I'll let you all know, then you can update um, uh, your versions. Okay. So that was that. So I'm hoping to get that organized. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is buy and sell zones in a very standard configuration. And so what, I, what I'm doing now is I have two instances of buy and sell zones running. And I have... The stop targets, this is set to 1 to 2. The stop multiplies 1.2 and the risk is 1.0. So we have a like a 1 to 1 for that. And what it's doing is it's simply putting in these orders in these areas of daily and weekly areas of supply and demand. So it's not looking at 4 hour or 1 hour. It's only looking at the daily and the weekly. Because these are the most profound areas of supply and demand. And it's doing really, really well. And this is essentially... Um, an attempt to find a configuration that is completely hands-off, which I'm currently uh, trying to figure out. But it's been running now for a couple of weeks. It hasn't taken a lot of trades, uh, maybe a handful, um, but things are looking quite good. So when I have a little bit more data, I can send an update, and then um, and then we can maybe uh, begin to to draw some conclusions about about this this particular configuration. But I'll let you know. Okay, and, um, and otherwise I thought we'd have a look at some charts. And so what I want to look at today is I want to look at Euro USD. Euro USD, where are you? Yeah. Okay, so I want to go to the monthly chart so we can see where we are. And the monthly chart, we zoom out and we're in a, a pretty a pretty interesting place to sell. Okay, so we had this this nice area here that was tested. We had a huge price inefficiency. Prices dashed north. We started to feed down into the buy zone. We entered the area of demand right here, and we left. Okay, now it looks like that we are looking to uh, move lower. We have actually removed this area of demand. See, it's been tested here, and now it's gone. And so we would expect prices to to gravitate to um, a very liquid uh, part of the market around here somewhere before continuing um, uh, its move lower. And you can see that we're, we're right at this this 50% area here uh, using the boxing methodology, which is super interesting. Um, so we had a reaction there. We had a month of bear, bearish trading. Okay, and this month we are refilling that. And so we're testing something up here. So on the smaller time frames, let's maybe have a bit of a, a look and see if we can see what it is that prices are. Are attempting to uh, take a stab at. Okay, and so we have um, we have this here. We have this pattern where we zoom out a little bit. Um, okay, so I'm going to draw these. So we had this here. Okay, uh, parent child child is tested. Parent is tested. Now it's been removed. The area that removed it is in here, somewhere in here. Okay, so price has poked up into that, went this far on this wick. Now we came down and now we're moving higher. But notice we have a price inefficiency. Okay, and the beginning of the 50% area for this boxing um, uh, entry here would um, would bring us to this area here, which is above this price inefficiency. So we can expect prices to potentially move, uh, move down here. <laughs> that was a funny formulation. We can expect prices to potentially uh, move down here, which essentially means I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> but we don't need to know what's going to happen. We just have to look at these these price patterns and try and make some draw some conclusions. But you can see that we went up to this area, we retreated, and we quickly moved back up to it. So it looks like we're going to have maybe another push higher before we uh, continue our journey lower. So let's have a look on the on the daily chart and see if we can uh, find out where prices will uh, potentially go. Uh, Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. Okay, so we have a couple of areas. I really like this one here. I like that a lot because I just like I just like this this release. 
But when I look at that, I can also see that prices have already been back to this area here. Oops, wrong tool. It's already been back to here and here and here. And so, I mean, this brings my attention to a little bit further higher, which is actually this uh, weekly area of, of supply just here. So I think that uh, this would be a very natural place for price to move up to. Okay, and close to this one, we failed, and now we're looking to move higher. But we do have this price inefficiency to address. Um, if prices came up here, I'd be quite quite keen about selling. Um, we are also doing something very interesting where we're really racing higher. You can see we have prices, but we're doing this here. Okay, so we're likely going to do this at some point. And so it's just a matter of trying to time that uh, correctly. Um, you don't have to get it perfect, but if you don't, then you need a stop that will help um, help deal with that. So let's try, let's zoom out a little, <clears throat> draw a box around here just so we can find it. Let me go to the four hour area and we take a look. So we zoom all the way over. Oh, sorry about that, my son just came home. Okay, so yeah, I mean, these are all worth tackling. This one here. It's quite a delicious one. I like that little one there. This is above this mess, you know, clarity, chaos. You want to trade above that. So this is probably going to be a pretty interesting. Ah, already tested. So we have to note of where it went to. It went just above that area. <clears throat> so that's already been tested. That held pretty nicely. Um, and there's nothing really in here that's super interesting. So I would certainly be looking from here. Okay. Just above this, you know, prices uh, uh, jot kind of dash lower, then we kind of traded sideways. You want to be above that because, I mean, as we've spoken about a hundred thousands of times, this stuff here, I mean, you want to be above that, okay, below if this is a, on, a, on a down move, okay, which brings our attention to this little price nodule just here. Okay, so focus on around this, this price point here. Uh, if prices do get up there, um, maybe start to accumulate a short position maybe if you're comfortable with doing that and you've made the decision to do that i think i'll probably um probably do that it's going to watch as prices kind of uh, do manage to make their way up there all right so there's that one let's have a look at gold yeah so i think gold is really interesting because central bankers make some pretty silly decisions. So the only thing that is going to have any perceived value is something that's always been perceived as valuable, and that is uh, these precious metals. Um, and so looking at this, I mean, we have a huge, very bullish week of trading here. Prices rallied, now we're accumulating. Prices did manage to come back down here. I mean, that would be a very uh, a very bullish um, or a very nice area to begin to buy. Um, it is in the middle of this this whole range, which I'm not so pleased about. But as the as the the boxing methodology tells us, I mean, if this is a discount price and this is an expensive price, somewhere in the middle is about an average price. So should prices come down here, and I think that would um, um, that would be a pretty interesting place to maybe uh, continue to, to move into gold. And as we move to the smaller time frames, you can see that we have a few things going. This is actually a really nice area here, a nice breakaway. The buy zone is established just here. We managed to move above here. The buy zone is established from right here. Okay. And so I think that this would uh, this would be an, a pretty interesting spot um, right there. I might consider doing something there. Um, and otherwise, yeah, this one's gone. This is beautiful, tested, very beautiful technical trading there. Um, and then there, there are quite a few really nice areas, but they're quite far below price. Okay, price has only managed to I mean, turned around here. And so these ones are still below price uh, and probably not going to be visited um, at the moment unless something crazy happens. But I like that. Let's have a look on the, on the monthly chart. Um, just to gauge, get a bearing. Yeah, so we were up here and we came down to here. So I think it's fair game for higher gold prices relative to the American dollar. Um, if we were to come a little bit deeper into here, I would have been 
very excited, but this is still, I mean, we've given back about close to 50% of this move. Uh, so that's, that's reasonable. We've removed this area of supply, which was tested, now removed by this. And now prices are, um, are looking to, they kind of, they stabilize. They've been trading into this range. And we did dash below, okay, which picks up liquidity to drive prices higher, which is very clearly uh, what has happened here. And so I'm thinking that prices are likely going to um, uh, be bought when they pull back. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's what I think will, will potentially happen there. Um, yeah, so keep your eyes on those areas. We've got this weekly area here. It's a little bit clearer and nicer on, on the daily. You can see not, uh, very very clearly we have this spot here, which is right at that 50% area, which I really like. So this could be a, a super interesting area to uh, to be to get in again because that buy zone is established. There's not uh, touched this area of demand. Good. Well, I'm going to leave it at that for the time being. If you have any questions, uh, please do let me know. And uh, thanks so much for watching. And I'll put a, a video of, uh, of the house we're staying at the moment so you can see how unbelievably spectacular uh, this place is. It's, um, it's like a Beverly Hills in the jungle. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very beautiful. So I feel, um, feel super, super grateful to be here. I'll send you a picture so you can check it out. It's quite lovely. All right. I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching.